I'm so excited to share with you a bevy of new gay movies that are coming out either in December or next year. So based on your recommendations that you've previously left, I have curated this list. So it's a mixture of rom-coms, romantic dramas, dramas, and two horror thrillers. In the comment section, let me know which projects you learned about for the first time and which projects you plan to watch. For those of you who have a VPN or live in the UK, you can watch them right now on the All4 app. Actually, I meant two of them. If you haven't gotten a VPN yet, what are you waiting for? With Surfshark VPN, you can change your IP address, switch your location from Peru to Fiji, and download the All4 media app to watch Barrio Boy or Tarnit, plus unlock other titles. In the States, the All4 app is blocked, unfortunately. With Surfshark VPN, you never have to experience being blocked again. Also, I use public Wi-Fi often. Once I bought a gift online, well, at a coffee shop using the shop's Wi-Fi. Later, I received an alert that someone else had spent $900 using my card. A VPN protects you so that someone else trying to steal your information won't be able to. Use my promo code Yates, scan the QR code or click the link in the pinned comment or description and you'll receive 85% off plus three months free so you can surf without worry. Now stay tuned for a list of new movies and TV shows that I know you will enjoy. Smiley is a rom-com in Netflix original series that follows Alex and Bruno who have one thing in common, they are both gay. Their differences seem insurmountable because of their personalities, but they are linked together by an invisible thread. A legend states that when two people are destined to be together, an invisible red thread connects them from the day they are born. Alex's lover ghosts him then Alex calls him using his work phone to try to disguise his identity, but he dials the wrong number, leaving a message for Bruno. The message changes their lives forever. The series is an adaptation of a Catalan play of the same name that premiered in 2012. The play won the National Prize for Dramatic Literature. The playwright is openly gay and many of his stories center gay characters. I first heard of this series because of the lead. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I think it's Carlos Cuevos Ciso. Carlos played gay characters in the Catalan series, Merle, and in the Spanish series, Someone Has to Die. If you enjoy foreign language rom-coms, then you might enjoy Smiley. Smiley premieres on Netflix on December 7th. The Well is a drama that follows Charlie, an overweight and reclusive English teacher who attempts to reconnect with his estranged daughter. Brendan Fraser plays Charlie and Sadie Sink from Stranger Things plays his daughter. The Well premiered at the Venice Film Festival. After its screening, Brendan received a six minute standing ovation that went viral. The film won four awards at the festival and was nominated for the Queer Lion Award. Even though the movie has not been released, critics believe that the film will revive his career. Brendan donned a fat suit to play the character who weighs 600 pounds. Darren Aronofsky, who directed Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, and Mother with Jennifer Lawrence, directed The Whale. If you enjoy dramas, then you might enjoy The Whale. The Whale will be released in theaters on December 9th. Knock at the Cabin is a horror mystery that follows gay parents, Eric and Andrew, on vacation in the middle of the woods. The family is taken hostage by four strangers who demand that they make the ultimate sacrifice to avert an apocalypse. Ben Aldridge of Spoiler Alert, Fleabag, and Pennyworth plays Eric, and Jonathan Groff of Frozen, Glee, and Looking, the movie, plays Andrew. The film is an adaptation of the horror novel the Cabin at the End of the World by Paul G. Trembley. If you enjoy horror mysteries, films about the apocalypse, or are a diehard fan of Ben Aldridge, then you might enjoy Knock at the Cabin. The film will be released in theaters on February 3rd, 2023 in the States and 
internationally. Heartbreak High is a romantic teen drama out of Australia that centers around Anne Marie and her best friend Harper, who created a hookup map of their sexual encounters at their school. The map was their inside private joke until it became public knowledge. Anne Marie goes down in flames for it. One of the best storylines from the show is between Darren and Cash. Darren is biracial and non binary. Cash is a drug dealer and written as asexual. I love the authenticity and complexity of the characters. LGBT, indigenous, and autistic characters are fully represented on the show. The show also navigates love, sex, and heartbreak while also delving into the mystery of what causes Harper to cut Anne Marie off. The performances are incredible and the writing is as well. The show has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Season 1 premiered in September of this year. The show was renewed for a second season. Season 2 should premiere in the fall of next year. If you love Euphoria, Sex Education, Degrassi, or my favorite, Elite, then you might enjoy Heartbreak High. And shout out to No Good Deed 54 and TV Junkie for 12 for both recommending the series. I had not heard of it previously. Fellow Travelers will be an eight episode political thriller on Showtime. A recent university graduate, Tim, has his life turned upside down when he falls for Hawk, who is charismatic but intimacy avoidant, while Tim is diehard about his religious and political conventions. Fellow Travelers chronicles the volatile romance between the two very different men who meet in the shadow of McCarthy-era Washington. Over four decades, they cross paths through the Vietnam War protests of the 60s, the disco hedonism of the 70s, and the AIDS crisis of the 80s while facing obstacles in the world and within themselves. Jonathan Bailey of Bridgerton will play Tom and Matt Bomber will play Hawk. If you enjoy political dramas or if you're a fan of Jonathan Bailey or Matt Bomber, then you might enjoy Fellow Travelers. The series will be released on Showtime sometime next year. Barrio Boy is a drama following Kike, a barber who develops feelings for a new customer, Kevin, in Brooklyn. The feature-length film was written and directed by Dennis Shiners, who previously wrote and directed the short, which inspired the film. The film premiered at the Iris Prize LGBTQ Film Festival in Wales in October. Barrio Boy is an indie film, and I did not believe it has landed a distribution deal. However, it will be playing on the film festival circuit. I will update you when it plays at the next virtual film festival. Egoist is a romantic drama out of Japan that follows the budding relationship between Kusuke, a successful magazine editor, and Yuta, his new personal trainer. The trainer is reluctant to commit due to the secret that he believes will alter the way Kusuke sees him. As a high school dropout with an aging mother, the trainer deals with financial difficulties. This detail complicates their relationship, which at times seems transactional. When Kusuke was 14, he experienced a sudden and unexpected loss. Because of this loss, he is drawn closer to the trainer. The film was adapted from the autobiographical novel of the same name. Overall, the film is magnetic and the actor who plays Kusuke dazzles throughout. It is satisfyingly textured, but also it has its flaws. But I recommend this film. If you enjoy romantic dramas, then you might enjoy Egoist. The film premiered at the Tokyo International Film Festival in October and will have a limited theatrical release in February 2023. Ganymede is a horror thriller that tells the story of Lee, a senior in high school and heir to a political dynasty in a small southern town. When he develops a crush on his gay classmate, he finds himself stalked by a grotesque creature that inhabits his thoughts and threatens physical harm. The film stars Jordan Dow of Reach and Pablo Castelblanco of Alaska Daily. Our actor Pete Zias also stars in the film along with Robin Lively from Teen Witch. The film is written by gay director Colby Holt, 
Holt directed the film with his partner, Sam Prost. If you enjoy LGBT horror, then you might enjoy Ganymede. The film will premiere in 2023. Good Grief is a rom-com following Mark, whose partner passes away, unfortunately. The passing unearths long buried and unresolved emotions over the death of Mark's mother. He travels to Paris with two of his closest friends and discovers romance. Dan Levy wrote the script and will direct and star in the film, which is in production right now. Luke Evans will star in the film along with Ruth Nega and Hamish Patel. Good Grief is the first project from the partnership between Netflix and Levy's production company, not a real production company. If you enjoy rom-coms, then you might enjoy Good Grief. The film is set to premiere on Netflix next year. Tarnit is a dramatic short out of Australia following Tyrone, a deaf 15-year-old, and his best friend Clinton, who is also deaf. They both live in the same neighborhood, and they both are neglected by their families and dream to escape the harsh realities of their childhoods. Like Barrio Boys, Tarnit, which was directed by John Sheedy, was an official selection at the Iris Prize. The film won the 30,000 Euro Award out of 36 titles. The prize enables the winner to produce a new short in Wales. The film is multi-layered and it will stay with you. I highly recommend Tarnit. I will let you know when the film virtually screens at an upcoming film festival because it does not have a distribution deal as of yet. Best Place in the World is a drama following Lorenzo, who leaves his homophobic country of Brazil and ends up in Provincetown. In P-Town, he meets Maurice. They have an intense and unexpected romance. Both are attracted to each other because they feel lost and desire to feel anchored to a place. Out actor James Bland stars as Maurice. The writer, Marco Calvani, wrote the script as a love letter to Provincetown after living there for nine months during the pandemic. If you enjoy romantic dramas, then you might enjoy The Best Place in the World. The film is in post-production right now. Calvani expects the film to be released in theaters in early 2024. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writervicyates for more about my art and literary projects. And in the comment section, let me know which projects you learned about for the first time and which projects you plan to watch. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and become a member if you can. And like and share this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos, 